So I think the way to build a successful surgical practice is you need to be available. Uh, when people start a new practice, there'll be many demands. Oftentimes those are seen as the things that may not be as exciting or may not be uh, during the routine hours. Uh, I know when I've started in two separate practices, in order to build those, you really need to be available to the consultants. Also available to your partners as they may ask you to help out and it may not be the right time or the right place but you work hard and make those things work. I would also reach out to the primary care doctors. Anytime you see a patient and operate on them, that's an opportunity to reach out to the primary care doctor. You can discuss who you are. You need to sell yourself a bit. Many of us are not used to doing that, something we're not so familiar with, but you need to sell your skill set and what you've done. It's an opportunity to say where you train, an opportunity to say if you did a fellowship. It's also an opportunity to tell them what you're interested in doing. You may be interested in certain types of diseases or operations. This allows you that opportunity. I've taken every chance I can when you can make that phone call or make a connection with a primary care doctor to do that. You also have to be very honest. When things have not gone well, you need to immediately reach out to the primary care doctor, to the family, to the patient. You need them to let them know what happened. Uh, and by doing so, you would relieve a lot of the issues that happen when you start and beginning in a surgery practice of not having the experience and maybe not having similar outcomes. Uh, I think these are the best ways to start a new practice and to grow that practice. The question of how to build a surgical practice comes up frequently early in someone's professional career. To me, the best way to think of it is to see yourself as a specialist whose role it is, is to solve or address a patient or referring doctor's problem. A lot of times that involves being available, being responsive, and again, trying to see yourself in that role as a problem solver. Frequently during training, walls are built up between medical specialties that really need to learn to work together in order to best take care of patients. When you see yourself in that role as someone who has unique skills or talents or expertise that can help address one part of a patient's problem, your journey to building a successful practice becomes much easier. That way, referring doctors and patients recognize you as someone trying to do your best to help solve that patient's problem. Once you do this, people recognize your willingness to do so and your skill at doing so, and you become a pleasure to work with. To me, that's the biggest challenge, is helping transition from that period of time where you're working in your own silo as a specialty trainee, becoming a part uh, of a healthcare team as a specialist addressing a certain need for a patient. The old adage of availability, affability, and ability still applies somewhat, but when you really break yourself down, your job is to help address a problem and to do it in a timely fashion that best helps your patient. The tip, the uh, recommendations that I would give a young surgeon about growing a surgery practice um, are kind of what most people have said in the past and that is the three A's being available, affable, and able. But in more detail, I mean availability really means um, being available to a referring physician and your patients. Uh, what I did was give out my pager number and cell phone to referring docs and a lot of times they just want to call you and ask some questions. Um, and this could mean that you need to be available every day unless you're on vacation. The more available, the more reliable you are, the more likely you are to get called for a consultation. Uh, and then you have to be nice. You have to be, act like you're excited about getting a new patient. Um, and that's the affable part, being friendly, uh, striking up conversations in the hallway, getting to know the referring doctors, getting them to trust you. Uh, and that leads into really ability, which of course you're going to get build a faster practice if you have good ability, uh, low complications, and this comes from uh, continued edu education, uh, possibly getting help from partners if it's a complicated case, making sure that you. Um, are continuing to improve your skills, possibly doing uh, CME or uh, postgraduate courses, 
and uh, as time goes on, the surgical skill should continue to improve throughout the postgraduate years. So, in summary, um, you know, I'd say that it all boils down really to um, being available, being friendly, and doing a good job. So how do you build a successful surgery practice? I think it starts in your training. Obviously you want to expose yourself to as many procedures as possible so you become technically proficient uh, by the time you start uh, as an attending because unfortunately a lot of the judgment um, on a surgeon is within that first year of practice and if you have a lot of complications you may develop a different reputation than if you have a lot of successes in that first year. So you want to prepare yourself as much as possible for that first year. I think secondly, being available as much as possible. I remember taking call for my partners uh, and volunteering for that. It allowed me to take care of emergent patients and talk to the primary care physicians of those patients and get to know them and meet them and ultimately sometimes get referrals from them. So I think being available uh, whether that means taking more call or uh, being available at the last minute when someone's asked you to see a patient that may need urgent attention. And obviously the other A's that we all hear of are other than available would be affable and able. So being nice to your patients, being nice to your referring physicians and uh, the able part we talked about and that is training yourself uh, as best as possible and being prepared uh, for that uh, first year of, uh, of being an attending because you learn a lot during that year. I think those are probably the keys in building a successful practice.